Well, let me let me start at the beginning. Welcome to Turtle Creek. If you've ever owned a bandsaw for any length of time, you're going to be popping blades. When you pop said blades, what do you do with them? Are they instant garbage, or can they be salvageable? They're welded at the factory, but they're not welded by conventional methods. So we're going to use a TIG rig, Heliarc. And I'm pretty sure at the factory they probably heat them up with friction, ultrasound. It's, it's hard telling, but they probably use it with as little heat introduction as possible. Uh, that makes your heat-affected weld zone smaller, okay? Um, which on the band part doesn't hurt per se. The tooth is absolutely destroys it. So if the cracks on a tooth, that tooth is toast in my experience. And I did this once with limited results and, and it was years ago. So I wanted to try to do a video on it again. Whether or not a dude or a dudette, whatever, whatever the case may be, can weld their own blades back. So I'm gonna be using two different filler metals, just basically more of an experiment than anything else. <clears throat> One of which is a low carbon alloy ER70S2. Uh, you can find it anywhere. And what we used to use in boilers for dissimilar metal welds and Inconel, it's an ER, Inconel Chromolic 3. Really stout little wire. We used to weld clips with boiler tubes where you had really, really mean heat cycles and cracked. Anything else would crack, this guy would. So it's interesting to see how it's going to work out. No. Before you get going, you're going to want to set this up on a jig of some form. I just used a piece of flat bar, but this blade has to be, you know, as square as you can get it, I would assume. Square the better. And make sure that your blade is held down tight and it's not up. You know, the heat's going to draw it a little bit either direction too. And you still want to put as little heat input as possible. If this is a 332, if I had a 16th, I'd be using it. You want to rig with a rheostat or a pedal so you can adjust the heat input. If you just have a flat out TIG rig where you have to set it, um, you just got to take your time. You know, will a little stop, will a little stop, will a little stop, will a little stop. You know, I would. Okay, so this is the back side. You can see I got some burn through, even being as gentle as humanly possible, and that's what you want. It's not um, <clears throat> sugared up or uh, you know burned up. The metal still rainbowed and pretty for carbon steel. That's what you want. Now you see right here, there's a little bit of a crack left. Okay, I'm gonna want to have to burn that out. Um, and then same right here, a little bit of incomplete penetration, and that's why I don't prep it. You know, I could square both these blades up. But I, I found that it doesn't really matter because you're burning through that whole crack anyways. There's the finished weld. I know it ain't the prettiest thing, but it's sound and uh, nothing's warped all the heck. Next, we're gonna be prepping and knocking that back down. I would recommend using a grinding disc versus a tiger paw. Tiger paws are good for prepping uh, and they're good for taking off material when it's thick but it'll blew it even worse if I use this dude. This dude will take off more meat with less heat.
Flip it and then grind the other side. You want to get it as slick as possible. And now for the Inca Nova. You want to prep it just the same as the other one. Clean it up real good, inspect for cracks. Make sure you're not doing all this in vain. Let's hope it welds up as good as that carbon one. So you wanna make sure again that everything's nice and true and tight. See how there's no gap or anything? There's no, you know, everything is, is tight. The blades are flat against this. Everything's just so. Okay, so this is the back side of the ink canal. You can still see I had some penetration through penetration, but see right here, it didn't break down. And again, right there on the end, you don't want to hit that end hot and heavy because it'll wash out on you. You'll get whoosh, and then you are, then you're in a, oh, here's a good example. Look at the front here. See, I got it too hot. I have to build that back up. So it's a lot easier to, to maintain it versus washing it out and building it back up. So that welded up pretty good. It actually welded a little better than the carbon. Um, labeled them, got them labeled, and I'm gonna knock this weld down and then we're gonna field test these suckers. Well, folks, I got some bad news. <laughs> the, the weldments did not work. Um, they actually cracked just when I was folding it up for transport. So it lost the temper and it's, they're toast. So my recommendations would be do not weld the cracked blades. Unless you got one of those great big old fancy machines that go Meh. like that. <laughs> 